All right, we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with a video response for Andrew Higgins of Higgins in Japan. Now, Andrew recently made a video talking about the top five things that he misses while living abroad in Japan. So I thought, in the spirit of things, that I would make my own list of uh, the top five things that I miss while living abroad in Japan. So, with that said, here we go. And uh, before we begin, uh, this episode of The Andy San is brought to you by Coke Orange. Drink Coke Orange. Alrighty, cool. So, let's begin with number five. Uh, certain foods and drinks uh, in America. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from a small town in Ohio. So, um, there's some regional things that I miss as far as like regional restaurants and things like that. And one of them is uh, Steak and Shake. Now, I know there are some people who are from that area who are like, ah, that's drunk people food. That's disgusting. It's nasty, greasy shit. Yeah. But man, <laughs> to me, that's some just good good stuff. Not the best quality, but it's it's a guilty pleasure. And I always get it uh, whenever I come back home to the States. Um, another thing that I miss, and this is mostly from my uh, San Diego days, is uh, just some good quality Mexican food. Now, granted, you know, I can get like Taco Bell and stuff like that on base if I, I'm really jonesing for like a taco or burrito or something like that, but you guys don't have the same. So, um, now I have heard that there are some uh, Mexican restaurants popping up here and there in Tokyo and Yokohama, so I might be uh, investigating those soon, so stay tuned. <laughs> and uh, another uh, drink or food product, whatever you want to call it, um, that I miss from uh, America is uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, Baja Blast is kind of a uh, sort of a lime-ish flavor of Mountain Dew. And uh, originally it was only available at Taco Bell, but uh, from my last visit to America, I found out that they actually uh, sell it in stores and cans and two liters and stuff like that, so uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, definitely I'm jonesing for some Baja Blast, and no, they don't carry it at the Taco Bell in Yokosuka. I don't know why. Weird. Anywho, moving on to number four. Oh, uh, clothes and shoes that fit me. Now, I kind of uh, can get a, get a, get by with this just because, you know, I buy the majority of my clothes either online or on base. So I don't have to go out to, like, Uniqlo or anything like that to get clothes. And uh, stuff like that. So... You know, I think the thing that I do miss is just being able to walk into any old store and just be like, hey, you know, I want this pair of pants, or hey, I want this shirt, and just, you know, good to go. So, um, clothes I can usually get by on, it's just, uh, even if there's stuff that's in my size, it's usually, um, and the bigger guys will be able to relate, you know, even if it's in your size, it still is the Asian fit. And, uh, just to give you guys a little, um, idea of that, here, I'll stand up here. Here's a little plug for uh, Clown Dubstep, by the way. Good channel, check it out. Uh, anyway, so this is a standard like American fit shirt. It's very loose, very baggy, uh, just one uh, XL. So um, the Asian fit shirts, even if it is an XL and it's you know the correct size and stuff like that, the fit will be different. So it'll be a lot tighter, and you know it'll especially pinch like in the shoulders, like around this area. So yeah. <laughs> Just to give you guys a little uh, difference in the fits and stuff like that. So, um, even though I can get stuff online and on base, I still do kind of miss just being able to walk into a store and pick something off the shelf and run with it. But paying first, of course, <laughs> and I'm not stealing. Anywho, <laughs> awkward transition. Uh, number three, uh, not having to translate everything in my head. And um, don't get me wrong, I do love Japanese. It is fun to learn a new language and to continue to learn a new language, but at the same time, it can be uh, very mentally taxing to constantly translate things in your head and be like, okay, okay, this kanji means this word in Japanese, and then this word in Japanese means this word in English, so okay, cool. And just, you know, constantly doing that in your head and just, you know, I'm sure over a period of time, you know, people who, you know, are more comfortable with the language and stuff like that it's not as big of an issue and it just kind of becomes second nature but for me you know I've only been here for like a year and a half at the time of this recording so um, things are still very fresh and even though I can understand some words and stuff like that it's still 
there's still that uh, you know that time in my head where it's like you know translating it from Japanese to English and then just kind of you know okay what does that mean and blah 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 <laughs> so um, hopefully it'll go away soon but who knows anywho moving on to number two uh, not feeling like an American wherever I go and I really noticed this um, whenever I visit uh, my family and stuff back in the States is that um, when I'm back home in the States I just feel like a normal dude I don't feel like I stand out or really stick out anywhere I'm just a regular guy and I don't get you know the vibe of like people staring at me or you know feeling out of place or anything like that and it's not that I feel out of place in Japan it's just you know I just I feel uh, just more American and I, <laughs> that's not to sound patriotic or anything you know America no, it's nothing like that. It's just that I feel, you know, more kind of like an outside person, you know. I'm, I'm a gaijin, you know, outside person, away person, whatever you want to call it. So, it is what it is, and uh, really nothing I can do about it, so, whatever. <laughs> Maybe it's just my own uncomfortableness and insecurity. Who knows? Anywho, moving on to number one. Number one thing that I miss while living abroad in Japan. And what do you guys think it's gonna be? You know, is it obvious? <laughs> My friends and family from back home in the States. Um, yes, Facebook and Twitter and all this other stuff kind of brings us a bit closer together. And I try to um, talk with my mom on uh, online uh, at least once a week whenever I'm home and able to. Um, but at the same time, it's it's still not the same as, you know, just being able to hang out with your friends or, you know, be in the same house and just be like, you know, hey mom, what's going on for, for dinner or something like that. I don't know. Just, it's not quite the same, although the, uh, I'm very appreciative of the technology that allows us to, uh, live a bit closer. So, you know, it's good. But, you know, that's just the, uh, the downsides of, uh, living abroad. But, you know, there's... There are a lot of positives as well, so um, I may cover that in a future video, who knows? But uh, for now, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. <laughs> Duh. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and others. And I uh, want to thank you guys for liking, thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.